Hi everyone, thanks for Hi everyone, what loud that one went up ja. <laughs> Hi everyone, thanks for joining me in my coffee adventure so far I hope you've been having so much fun, I know I have And I hope you say yes <laughs> Great, so yeah, for today as you can see before us um, We're just gonna dive right into one of the most important things In terms of bringing coffee at home, which is Your kettles! <laughs> yes! Kettles! Yeah. So, um, kettles hold water like the and it's not about what they hold but it's how water is being channeled into your pour overs that's important. Popular kind of kettles in um, coffee making is actually this one's called the goosenecks. So they cut they're called that because the spouts are of a you know a funny thinner shape. Um, and so yeah, these are the kettles that are most comfort coffinly. So these are the kettles that are most commonly used uh, in coffee and this is the one that of course that we see in most households just the regular kettle which we also need to compare so um, yeah let's just dive right in this is in no ways a scientific review comparison whatever and yeah just want to just go dive right in and see which of these kettles maybe not this but which of these kettles <laughs> I prefer and how they match up so let's go um, and there are three things that we're gonna compare right we're gonna compare how fast they boil water second is which one pours the best most accurately and third um, we're probably gonna compare the functions let's just start shall we so the first one we're gonna go straight into how fast do each of these kettles boil water to 100 degrees Celsius. So I know that in coffee making, in coffee brewing, we don't usually boil water to 100 degrees Celsius. But for the matter of this comparison, we're just going to do that um, because your household kettle cannot actually control um, the temperature to which you want to boil to. So it's to make it as fair as possible a comparison we actually put in the same amount of water in each of these kettles. So I have here a husky cup. It is about 170 ml per cup and in each of these um, kettles we have filled it up with three cups so um, equal portions throughout all plugged into the same power brick so that the same um, electricity the amount of electricity is running through all of them so like yeah we're just gonna see how fast each of them balls i'm by myself now so i'm gonna attempt to ball all these three kettles at the same time, watch me go. Okay, here we go. Wait. Okay. So I'm just gonna set the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'm gonna take this last one, this one on straight away. And um, I'm gonna press ball, ball, ball. Okay, they're all on. This one's at 42 degrees, this one's 36, this one... I don't know. So this one's the quickest so far, from what I can tell. <laughs> so we can definitely tell that this one's the loudest out of the three. This one's the second, making the most noise. And this one's virtually quite silent. Oh yes, I forgot to introduce the kettles. This is Brew Vista Artisan Kettle. It's a smaller version that holds about 600 ml. This is the Fellow Stack EKG Kettle. And this is a uh, Tifao, which I don't know what <laughs> model <laughs> this is. Um, but you know. Uh oh, this sounds like it's going there, it's going there. This one sounds like it's winning. Yep, this one's done. So, winner, ding ding ding. It's, the first one is this. Well done, household kettle, in winning this first round of comparisons. Oh, this one's catching up quite well. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say that this one will be number two. Come on now, come on now. Oh, this is like a clear winner, guys. This one's already like cooling down already. Okay, this one is clearly the winner. Hey, actually no, this one's the winner first. Before this one. So this one's second and this one's the last, hey? So from that very quick and detailed comparison, um, we realized that this household kettle T file, you have just won this round. And 
Somehow or rather, the Brewstar surprised me. Um, it went second, it came in second, and the fellow came in third. So let's just move on to the next um, part, which is which of these kettles allow us as home brewers, you know, the most easy control of water flow into our pour overs, into our cups, because that's gonna affect how our coffee actually tastes. So for the methods of, of this comparison, we're just gonna use a bowl as my water basin, as my water collector. Um, and we're just gonna pour waters from three of these kettles into this bowl and we'll just see how well they flow, hey? So let's just start off with the household kettle because we, I think most of us already know how household kettle pours water, right? I'm just gonna pour it right, yeah. So obviously, a lot of water is coming out from the household kettle. Like, duh. Well done. And now just, just taking a look at these two gooseneck kettles, like, you can tell very obviously that both their spots are actually angled quite differently. Like, Brewista has more of an S shape, while the fellow actually has more of a, like an L shape, right? So I would think, I would think that the Brewista would have more control because water is gonna take a longer, longer time and a longer distance to flow out whereas for the fellow it's just gonna um, be less of a hassle so let's just go straight and see how this turns out Whoa! yeah this is no issue at all whatsoever so that's great like there's a little bit of a control thing going on here a little mist of a control when you try to do really fine pause uh, it feels like you really need to have a good hand control in terms of like getting a good very steady drip from the fellow. So uh, let's just see how the 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 barista does, right? I'm having like very high hopes for this because of the S snack and all that shit jazz. So here we go. Yep, same. No issues with the normal pour. Oh, but this one really stops with just the slightest. I mean, the control, even the slightest, the slightest change of your hand movement the water really comes out very differently. This definitely wins in terms of having the variance of how much you can control the water. Um, but I think for someone just starting out like me, it might actually work better if you start off with the fellow kettle because this, even though, even though it needs, um, it needs uh, more adjustment in getting that, that flow, right? It's quite steady and it doesn't fluctuate a lot. But in terms of the Brewista, so let me just move this aside again. The Brewista, every, every single action, action counts and every single angle changes the water flow. So I think this takes a lot of skill. This definitely takes a lot of skill and I'm still trying to perfect that. I'm just pouring water into a bowl, like, guys. So if I have to give a winner to this round, it's definitely going to be the Brewista. Um, it has many, um, it allows for a lot of changes in terms of the flowing speed and in terms of the control. But I'm, I'm saying that this is definitely going to take much more skill. And I see why professional baristas are using this option instead of this most of the time. Whereas the fellow is definitely, uh, I mean it looks good so I'm going to choose this probably to use most of the time. I'm also not that pro yet lah, so like to get a steady pour, I think this one helps me get a more steady pour across most of my hand angles, right? So, Brewster wins, but I'm probably gonna use the fellow more for now. And to the third thing, which is the functions. Yay, the most exciting part. Um, so, um, I think, I don't have to talk about this, right? Because, <laughs> well, what's the function of a household kettle? You turn on, you boil water to 100 degrees Celsius, and you're done. <laughs> so, I think this one we can just not Yeah, let's just let's just give this guy a rest, right? So I'm just gonna state outright these two have quite similar functions. Both are able to hold a temperature uh, for 60 minutes at a time. What that means is that let's say I bought this to 94 degrees Celsius and um, I just put it back onto the base and I turn on a hole function. It allows me to hold 94 degrees for uh, up to 60 minutes. For Burista, it's sort of like the same function, but to every time you set, you take it up and you set it down, you have to press the keep warm function. Oh, and a fun fact, do you know that water boils at lower temperatures at higher levels? So at higher elevations, you actually boil water at a low temperature. So for all those things in high rises, you are at an advantage. Okay, moving on. Yeah, what other functions are there? Let's just turn all this back on. Well, this one has very visible buttons and it's very noticeable that Oh no, it's, it's boiling again. 
Yeah, but this has very noticeable um, buttons which are very recognizable. So it's very easy to just operate them. Keep warm, set a timer, and you can change from degree Celsius and Fahrenheit. This one, kind of same things. You have a timer. You only have one knob and which you can change the button, you can set the timer. And actually, I found this out on the internet that there is a worm game in there. So there's a snake game in this kettle. If you have, I don't know how to activate it, but apparently if you press a certain, uh, the knob a few times, it activates a worm game, like snake on your Nokia phones from the past. Okay, yeah, but honestly speaking, I think, um, Comparing these two in terms of, I think for me, keep warm or the whole function is the most important part um, in terms of functions because it helps you maintain the temperature that you can use for your brew. And the fact that you have to press an extra time to keep warm, every time you lay it down, that's a hassle. But this one, you take it up, put it down, the moment you have the whole function on, this keeps warm, right? 60 minutes straight, so easy. In terms of functions, I mean, it really depends on what you're looking out for, right? Are you looking out for something that has great pouring capabilities, dude? Value the ease of use in terms of um, being able to hold your temperature without even having to think about it, right? Do you value capacity, right? So any of these kettles do work, but in terms of brewing coffee, definitely these two. And my personal, my personal choice would definitely be this fellow stack kettle because for beginners like me, uh, and if you're just starting out, it's easy to get a good pour straight out from this. Um, this one you do take a, a bit more skill, but this one's really easy. And in terms of ergonomics, this is very sturdy and the grip, the, oh, the grip is heavenly. Can I just tell you, the grip is like, whatever the fellow engineers did on this grip. Yeah. Enough said. Uh. Yeah. So, of these two, this is fellow stack EKG. You're definitely gonna be my daily driver for gooseneck kettles. Yeah, that's my choice. And so which of these three do you think is will be your pick? Just leave it in a comment below or somewhere or somehow or just yeah, just let us know or and I hope that through this entire non-scientific comparison that you're able to make a choice if you're looking into one of these kettles. And that's it. So stick a See lah, don't have my coffee, that's why. So stay caffeinated guys, and I will see you in the next one! Okay, uh, I think you should stop here and go make my coffee. See you guys.